Kathleen Rush. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Rush. Okay, you have a school zone violation, speeding ticket in the school zone. You have a parking during an emergency parking ticket on Atwoods Avenue. Mm -hmm. And you have a <laughs> parking on the sidewalk on Meeting Street. Yes. All right, so which one do you want to start with? Uh, the first one, I guess, the most recent one, um, which was the school zone. Um, honestly, I was not overly familiar with the area not to excuse speeding through a school zone. It was late in the day, and I was trying to get to a work event, so. What do you do? Uh, I work for a manufacturing organization in Rhode Island. What do you do? Are you a sales rep? What do you I do? I am, yeah. So I'm an account manager. I oversee uh, with two other uh, colleagues, the Midwest. Yeah. I actually am on PTO today, so I took it so I could come here. <laughs> it's cheaper for you to pay. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. all right. Well, so I, I wasn't sure if this was going to go against like my insurance because it was speeding, um, so I wanted to see if I could apply my good driver's record. Aside from my parking tickets that I have from 2009 and 2004 that I uh. see on here, um, I think I've had a pretty decent driving record over the years, at least since I grew up <laughs> many years ago. You were doing 31 miles an hour in a school zone. Mm -hmm. I dismiss 31 because I question the calibration between 30 and 31. So routinely, I dismiss 31. Okay, thank you. All right. Now, before you start thanking me, we've got to finish the other two now, okay? I actually remember these, um, and I, I don't know why I didn't pay them back in the day. I probably didn't have the money at the time. Um, well, you're, a, you're an accountant executive. What do you mean? Well, you're, now I am, but I wasn't always. So I was probably still in college or whatever, doing whatever I was doing back then. I have no idea. But Well, that was uh, Inspector Carrigan. Her parking on the sidewalk is 2004, so that's 18 years ago. So yeah. we've, been we've been searching for her for 18 years to come in. Yes and surrender, so she finally gave up and surrendered. I'm gonna fine you $30 for each of the two offenses. They go back so far, it would cost us more to try to, to get the information available, so it's gonna cost you a total of 60 bucks. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Before I go, I have a quick story for you. Um, I heard you talking about Normandy. So I'm the youngest of seven, and my dad was on the beach the second day. Uh, he, he was, was 19. He was, in, he was in Normandy? He was in five battles, and he was in the Bulge as well. He was 19 when he went over, and he was uh, just about 24, I guess, when he came back. Um, I was actually born on June 6th, um, many years later. But he used to joke about it, not literally joke about it, but he used to say, you know, you wouldn't, none of you kids would be here if I had been on the beach that first day. And then, ironically, I was born on D-Day many years later. So talk about crazy. Did he ever talk about it? Um, he didn't until he got much older. As he approached, he lived till he was 92. He died, I think, nine years ago. Um, and towards the end of his life, he started to talk about the war a little. Uh, but he had, you know, it was hard. He saw a lot. It was difficult. If you can, share some of those stories, because they're, they're precious and they're being lost to history. So do you remember any of them that you could share with us? Um, well, I remember the U-boat story specifically. Um, he, he was kind of, as you described, he got off the U-boat, and he, he, was, he said he was towards the back. And um, he just remembers his sergeant telling them what had happened the day before and that they just had to keep their eye on the, the like there was like a fence, and they had to run to the fence. I get chills when I talk about it because I just, like, it, it saddens me that he was so young and lived through that. But they did have all that gear on their backs. And he said they were very weighed down. And he said he just remembers when they lowered the thing, he just ran. And he ran as fast as he could until he got to the fence. And he just remembers getting over it. And he doesn't really remember how he did it. And it was just, like, gone. Like, you know, sometimes things are just so difficult. You can't, you don't want to recall them. Um, and he basically, you know, said that he knew, like, he had, in a sense, like, gone to the bathroom on himself because it was so frightening. And he was just a kid. He was 19. So, but, you know, they grew up quick. And then he was in the bulge, and I just remember a few stories about that, but nothing super specific. But that one always resonated with me because I could, you know, we all saw the movie, right, Fighting Private Ryan. And so then, and he actually went to that movie with my brother and left. He stayed for three minutes, and my brother was, like, all annoyed. He's like, I can't believe I paid for your ticket, and you, like, bailed. And he's like, I can't watch that. He's like, it just all comes back. So, 
they were uh, they were a special breed of men for sure. <laughs> I was just a very very young during World War II, and I remember that. And uh, I remember going to school in kindergarten, and every so often someone would come in, and all of a sudden they start sobbing, and the teacher would ask them what was wrong, and they say, "My dad." or my uncle, or someone in the family uh, perished in the war. And <clears throat> they, had, they had these little flags that people would hang in the window. And if, if a family had one person in the service, there'd be one star on the flag, and they, it was a badge of honor. And some people had, sometimes the two stars or three stars, if they had three people in the family in the service. But there was such a spirit of patriotism back then, mm -hmm. you know, the likes of which I haven't seen since. Mm -mm. But in one way or another, we've all been affected by, by the Second World War when they say it was the greatest generation. I think it was well-deserved. And I remember I had a cousin whose name was Armand, Armand Caprio, and uh, the news came in that his plane got shot down and he died in the Second World War. And I remember being just a youngster going over to my uncle's house and my father was one of 10. And so all the family was there and everyone was crying and weeping and consoling one another, you know. But what is your dad's name? John. John, what was his rank, do you know? I don't. I should know that, but I don't. I, I didn't talk to my dad too much about the war. He was talked it, to my brothers a little bit more towards the end, but. Was, was his last it was, name? It was rough, what's was that? His, was his last name Rush? Yes. John Rush. Yep. This matter is dismissed. Thank you, thank you, Your Honor. This is on John for his service. The case is dismissed. Thank you, Your Honor.